Hi everyone, now a couple of questions I got on the internet, uh, quite a lot asking about the type of box that I like to put my dry flies in, uh, well basically the ones I'm tying at the moment I like to use a, a box like this, it's basically a, a deep box, it's uh, deep enough that I can get the fly in and close the lid without squashing it and that's obviously a big deal, if you want to put a dry fly especially into a sort of foam like this here, now this is, as you can see, this this one is uh, from a company called Vision. It's because it's a V105. Now I don't get paid to do this, so I buy these boxes myself. Um, they're not expensive. Uh, they're, they're, I think I paid last time I paid. Uh, they were some like under ten pounds anyway each, so they're, they're not expensive uh, when it comes to a box anyway. So. Uh, it's as I say, it's a good box. Now I, I usually, depending on these flies, I, I put, uh, even though there's, you can put twelve flies in a row. Now, if obviously a smaller fly, you can easily do that. And the bigger flies, you may only get six. And I do that when I'm sort of with the March Brown. Uh, it's a big fly, so it takes up. If you don't want to squash your fly anyway, I like to put six or so in each row. Uh, the bigger flies, and uh, they're, they're really really good. Now. I'm going to be tying another dry, uh, I know I've tied one or two, as I say the reason I'm doing, uh, I'm just filming as I go along uh, the flies I'm tying at the moment and it just happens to be dry flies, especially for the beginning of the season and uh, one of the flies I'm going to be tying is, a. Uh, it's, it's, I had the, there's a fly, the, obviously the Green Rose Glory, everybody knows it, but I'm going to be doing the Dynamite Harry version. Now, what I like to do sometimes is mix, this is a synthetic fibre, this is from uh, Full and Mill. Uh, this one here is the Light Done, I'll just show you it. So basically it's a Full and Mill product, you get the Big Hanks, uh, it's called Ultra Dry Yarn, and this is a Light Done as I say. Uh, but as you can see it comes in, there's loads of strands, I mean it looks like it's all together there but it's not. They come apart quite easy, so you've got lengths that you can use. Uh, now, as I say, I like to mix the colours. Now, uh, sometimes I'll do it, obviously. This is a brown olive version. Uh, now, it has more olive that is quite dark. You can see it's got that very dark green, like. But it's a nice colour. So what I do is I just brush together a single strand of the, the light done and the brown olive. And it gives me a nice mix. And when the light hits it, you get this nice colour. Uh, so that's why I like to use it, I like to sometimes blend it like that. Uh, the rest of the fly is just basically a dynamite harry. Now if you want to brush it together, the easiest way to do it is to, I use a toothbrush. And this is a toothbrush that I've cut at an angle, it's probably halved it. These were only like 20 pence, 30 pence, these brushes. I've had them for years. But you cut it at an angle, obviously stiffens the, the bristles up. And it allows you just to brush the fibres together. It's quite easy. And that's it. So that's how I always prepare it. And then you tie the dynamite hurry. Now this is a version, this is one I'm going to be tying or trying this season. Uh, just to see how it goes. Um, obviously it's good to experiment. These are proven ones. This, these are like, first one here on my finger is anyway. That's a March Brown, Iron Blue. And then just an, the original one I tied was the... Uh, the olive. Basically the only addition I've done to these flies is added on the tail. Now I'm not the person who came up originally with the Dynamite Harry. It wasn't me. Uh, basically all I've done is taken that style of fly, I've added the crop delay on fibre, mixed the fibre like I've done in this one. This is a tan and brown. I've just messed about with the, the style of fly to suit the patterns obviously that we fish in. The, it was t I did it the first time I did it was in 2017 when I was asked to tie a dynamite harry. Uh, I had no idea what it was. I had to look it up and I found it. So, great style of fly. It's a good pattern and uh, very popular. So, we'll tie the, the Green Rose Glory version of that fly. Now, the hook choice is entirely up to yourself, really. You could use a standard hook when you're tying this fly, a dynamite harry, uh, or you can, like I like to tie it on a curved hook, uh, like the, the Czech Nymph. That, 
it's got that kind of bend or circle style hook. Now, it's, it's one of those hooks that you allow the fish to take the fly, meaning that you allow, try and allow it to turn uh, because it'll hook up it's hook itself really half the time. Uh, so it's a well, I, what I like, I've got a, quite a mid to tip action rod, which is a softer action rod that basically it forgives a lot, meaning that it's given it's not it's not too fast put it that way and stiff and which you can take away a, a fly uh, quite quick so allow the fly to or the fish to turn in the, uh, these type of hooks uh, and uh, even most times you'll you'll hook them up but then that's just what happens when you're fishing you miss some you get some it's as simple as that now this is a black nickel version as you can see here uh, no, it's a check nymph is meant for nymphs. It's a medium wire hook. They do a heavier version of that hook, uh, and I use it in a lot of flies. I use it obviously uh, check nymphs. I use it in especially caddis flies. I use it a lot in that emergers things. It can shuttlecocks. You name it. It's a great fly. It's a great hook. I like it. Uh, thread I'm going to be using just a this is a uni thread 80 in yellow, which suits the the green ones. It's going to wax the thread. I'm going to basically take my thread to the point of the hook. There. For the tail, I'm going to use, now you can use green or furnace type hackle. I'm using this as a, a fiery, I'm going to show you the, the package. Now, this is what I'm using here. This is, whoop, going the wrong way. It's a cock de Leon bronze saddle. It's called Fiery Ginger. So there, uh, you, can, you can see the, the colours there. It's a lovely colour, it's got that, you can see it better than the feather. Um, I use it in the March Brown, I use it in two or three others, but this colour obviously goes with it. But if you don't have it, just use a a, a brown or a furnace type hackle fibre. Now, the idea with the, the reason I like to use the Cock de Leon is it's got a very shiny fibre and it blends into the body. So you're looking for a the tail length, you want to see the tail, but you, as I say, you're using it as part of the body, so it'll be slightly longer than normal. So you'll be a tail, so part of that would be your body, and then it'd be a tail sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is catch it on the top, come underneath with a turn, pull it. Slightly opens the fibre out a wee bit. Trim this away. And then I'm going to take my thread up. I'm going to get some of the yellow thread just to, at the back. Now because of the fibre's quite dark it gives that nice olive light look and with the wax you can see basically what you're looking for. The fibre there. Can't see it. I can see it in the camera but I can't see it. I uh, trimmed it away anyway. So now what I'm going to do is this is going to form the wing and say part of the body really it's, it's the style of the fly. So we tie, as I say, it's brushed together so we get that grey olive type look. So what we've done here is we've come up with maybe about say three mil or so. We're midway between where we started and where we tied our tail in. So we want a good half dozen turns or more just to make sure that's secure, tied forward. To get the body, I just come over the top with the scissors. Well, just lower the wing. You want like a straight cut. So, but it's a tapered cut to the middle of the tail. Just trim away. If you want it finer, you can just trim it. So you see what we're looking like. Check out the set of longer ones. I know it doesn't look like much, but uh, it makes a big difference. Just taking it down a wee bit at the top. There we go. Now, for the thorax, what I'm going to use, as I say, I'm, I'm using materials that you can buy rather than materials that I blend and mix myself. This is a Euro Nymph flash tub from Full and Mill. It's called Light Hairs Ear UV. It's actually got a bit of gold through it, and it's a natural type fibre through it as well, it's synthetic. It's a great fibre, it's, I use it quite a bit, this one. You don't need much, just lightly dub it onto your thread. The gold goes with the greenos. 
usually there's a gold rib on the, the fly, so this is given as that. So we tidy that area up, and then we take our thread to the front. Take away the excess dub, just slide it down your thread. Then I've got a, a well marked furnace hackle. This is a, off a saddle, a Hebert Miner from Whiten. Uh, so it's a, a bronze grade as far as I believe. Just checking the length of the fibre. So if you put the stem in line, and don't be shy with the... I'm just going to come up a wee bit. Don't be shy with the length of the fibre. This would be better. Uh, I'm not that keen on a short fibre length. So what I've done is I've obviously taken away some of the fibres at the base. And we tie it in front of the wing. Put your thread right up against the wing and then we're going to post. So basically posting the, uh, the wing and the hackle together, taking the thread up. Hold it as you come round, tighten. And then come back down, enough to form like a few turns that you're looking. Depends on the hackle. You're looking maybe a, a four to six turns. So then when I form the parachute, because I've taken it up, and then when I'm winding my hackle, I come round holding the wing to this point, change over, and then the next turn should be under that, next one under that, next under that, and that should do it. Now as I come round, I take the, I take the hackle down, and lift the hackle fibres up and out of the way. So basically there you can use my fingers, these two fingers on my left hand just to hold the hackle for a second and catch it. And then I just focus on making sure it's secure, a good half dozen turns. Don't worry about anything just now, just trim away your, your hackle. Now we've got the remains of the dubbing. You could have taken that off but I've just leave it on, leave it. So again, I'm just going to lift this up. Now I'm practically at the eye here. And I'm just going to take my thread up by the dubbing. Now that's the dubbing up towards the, the hackle and the wing. And then I'm bringing it back through the dubbing. That tightens it up. And then just keep your thread tight. Don't let it go. I just come in and varnish the thread. So I'll put varnished round about a centimetre down from the eye just apply it again lift this out of the way and then flat finish slide up tighten trim away and then because obviously I've pushed everything up we can bring it back down now just press not so much the wing but the hackle just press it and then you can just have a straight cut if you wish just which would be to the back of the hook. So normally I would, you could take it to the back or you can angle it to get a taper. So you can just angle the thread and that gives you a slight taper in this case. I've missed one or two fibres so I'm just going to trim them out. The, the new, this yarn from Fully Mill it floats forever, it really does. Uh, obviously I gink it up or whatever you use. I don't use gink, sorry, it's just, just a term now. Um, I use muslin, but you could use whatever floating you like, you prefer. And I find it just keeps going and going. And as I say, I like to hang a, uh, a nymph for a, a wet fly or anything off the bend at times, depending on how the, the fish are feeding. It uh, supports that really well. So it's a great pattern, great style. So I hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks for watching.